So how big is the solar system? I could tell you the Earth is 93 million miles away from the Sun, or that Pluto is 40 times further from the Sun than we are, but those numbers are so big they're hard to imagine. So let's try a different approach. What if we made a model of the solar system, where the Sun is about the size of a softball, and the Earth is just a tiny dot? Then we can walk, or jog, and get an idea of the distances. Well, the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum has a model just like that along the National Mall. Let's take a look. Here's the Sun. The inner planets are not far away. Just a few steps. This is Mercury. Just a tiny dot. Now here's Venus, just a few steps away. Again, it's hard to see it's so small at this scale. Now here's Earth. Those few steps equal 93 million miles in the actual solar system. Now let's go to Mars. It's a little further away. Once we get past Mars, the distances start to get much bigger. So we're going to have to jog. Now we're passing through the asteroid belt. And at the end of the block, we'll reach the planet Jupiter. Jupiter is much bigger, so you actually can see it in the display here. In the photograph, there it is. Now the distances start to get much bigger. We're crossing the Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. Further still. There's Saturn. You can just see the rings in the picture. Now the next planet is Uranus, and it is quite a hike. See how much further the distances are out here in the outer solar system. I should have brought my bike. That's why it takes so long for spacecraft to travel out this far. Here's Uranus. The next and last planet is Neptune. And this model goes all the way to Pluto. Let's find out how far Neptune is. There is a spacecraft right now that's traversing this distance, going all the way to Pluto. It's traveling at 180,000 miles per hour. And It's taken 10 years to go all the way out to Pluto. We're still not to Neptune. We must be almost to another star by now, huh? Well, we'll see that distance in just a second, too. Here's Neptune. so far from the Sun. Neptune is a much smaller gas giant, so it's a bit hard to see. And finally we'll jog all the way out to Pluto. Pluto is a dwarf planet and it's part of a, a whole bunch of objects way out at the edge of the solar system called the Kuiper Belt. Pluto's orbit actually crosses Neptune's, and there's a point every couple hundred years where Neptune is actually, uh, Pluto rather, is actually closer to the Sun than Neptune. But that doesn't last long. Most of the time it's quite, quite far out. We're still not there. Here we are. Here's Pluto. So all in all, on our little model, I've walked and jogged 
2,000 feet. That's a little bit less than half a mile. You can take a look at the distance as we look back. As you round that curve in the distance, that's where the model begins. So where do you think the next star would be? Well, we would have to keep walking a little bit. I'm here in Washington, D.C., and I've been walking west. If I keep going in this direction, the nearest star, called Proxima Centauri, would be the size of a grape, and it would be located out here by the redwood trees on the Pacific coast of California. The brightest star in our night sky, Sirius, would be in Hawaii. That's quite a walk. So how big is the solar system? Big.